Oh! Did I hit anything? Oh, run! Oh. Run! Oh. Run! run. Back up. Oh, no. One. All right, so it has been a long time since I made any videos or um, associated YouTube content. I've been working on a lot over the past few months. Uh, if you haven't seen, Dream Chaser has just arrived at KSC and I do a lot of work on Dream Chaser, like a ton. Um, so a large swath of my time has been completely eaten by the arrival of the spacecraft and some of the initial planning of just getting it in the building. So you can blame Dream Chaser uh, in part for a lot of the lack of content uh, for the past few months. Um, on top of that, I've worked on another project for the past three to four months or so uh, towards the beginning of the year that uh, should look really familiar I got put onto a, uh, a small six-person side project involving working through how you would deliver resources to any place on Earth um, from a pre-stage location in orbit. This is, uh, this is a pretty cool project I've kind of had in the background for a really long time. So essentially you can have an orbiting warehouse of equipment and deliver that equipment to the ground. Um, I got to go out and participate in a scale model drop test using a helicopter uh, at the beginning of the year, and that has been a super cool project to get to work on. And we got to do a lot of hands-on work in the assembly and build out of the um, drop pod, for lack of a better term. Um, and uh, that has real relevance for uh, the video today. So in the same spirit of working on the drop test, um, a certain game came out recently called Helldivers 2, and I have been absolutely loving this game. Reloading! Help! Oh, I'm gonna think I'm calling you here! Help! Oh, uh, you got it! It's been really fun to get to play cooperatively with, uh, with a lot of my, uh, my old friends, and I have absolutely loved getting to spend time uh, dropping in from orbit and, you know, killing bugs and stuff. So the, the game is, is great. I love it. It's super fun. <laughs> uh, a lot of people know about it, obviously, by now, but um, I'm a little late uh, getting the video produced here, so just laying the background. Uh, essentially, the game centers around the concept of having orbital drop pods from a spaceship in orbit that can deliver resources to the ground. So these drop pods come in from orbit, they re-enter, they deploy rocket motors to slow themselves down, and then they hit the ground, uh, embed themselves in the ground, and that's their like landing system. And then the, uh, the top lid on them pops off uh, and you have either a soldier or a piece of equipment or what have you uh, come out of there. But uh, th with these these drop pods, you know they they're they're pretty cool. They're really similar to the thing I've been working on in my day job, uh, although a little more intense on how they uh, they do their landing burn. So in the spirit of making the two kind of overlap and my personal projects overlap. I decided to embark on building a functional version of what is in game. There's a lot going on in these last few seconds of hitting the ground, so I just wanted to take a little bit of a foray into the process of entry, descent, and landing, or EDL. In real spacecraft, this is a, a huge part of, of missions where they re-enter and they come back through the atmosphere. So Dream Chaser does this. Starliner, Dragon. The process of entry, descent, and landing, again, is, is three main phases. So the ship, the drop pod, the whatever, uh, has to basically conform to be able to do something for each of these. So for my purposes, looking at the Helldiver's drop pod, it has all of the subsystems that a real spacecraft uh, pretty much does. 
Um, so first and foremost, it has a heat shield. So my version here has a, uh, a 3D printed one. We're obviously not hitting any uh, hypersonic speeds on landing, but it does have an aerodynamic dome that goes on the bottom. The other part, again, is the rocket motors. So that's for your landing. And then the D part, the descent, uh, we have a big long fall through the atmosphere. So in, in any case, uh, we need a way to stay stable and straight down. Um, this was a, a bit of a challenge for our uh, drop test using the helicopter, but for this drop pod, uh, the devs actually had a great amount of thought into the design of the structure, and it uses this uh, grid fin style uh, aft fin system to keep it all stable. But um, these fins are, are at the way, way back of the actual drop pod, so that you know during the fall, um, it stays stable and the nose stays pointed down. Um, there's, uh, there's hundreds of thousands of feet, you know, or meters between uh, the atmosphere surface and the ground, so you have to try and cover that gap and maintain some level of stability during the fall. Um, for my drop pod, you know, I am not going to go as high, so I developed a little bit of a concept of operations, if you will, for how it's going to operate. Essentially, we're going to haul up the whole pod using a drone, go up to altitude, and once it reaches a predetermined altitude below the drone's service ceiling limit, it's going to cut itself free and it's going to free fall with its fins out uh, and kind of maintain stability on the fall. Um, we're going to fall for a while, essentially. And once we reach, you know, a predetermined altitude, we're going to ignite all three of our rocket motors and we're going to stabilize ourselves and kind of come in to land. The drop pods in the game hit really, really hard. Uh, they basically rely on a level of, you know, hand waviness uh, to make the occupant survive and hit the ground. For my purposes, I'd just like to stop before destroying the drop pod, right before it hits the ground. Because they might not all ignite at the same time, they actually have a system of active control where I'm using the same thrust vectoring control systems that I use on my other model rockets in this drop pod, but it's way more complex and it's probably the most complex project I've ever taken on. The assembly structure is almost entirely 3D printed, so I catted up and designed a structure around a gimbal mechanism that allows each motor to pivot out and rotate uh, together. So we actually have full three axis control. We're using a thing called cosine throttling for the landing here where we're actually angling the motor more and more sideways to where it's helping us less and less in slowing down so that we can kind of act as a, a throttle and control how hard we're gonna hit the ground or keep from stopping too early. One of the major things about the drop pod is it doesn't stop before it hits the ground because it is trying to reach the ground. I also designed in a really, really cool twist mechanism that uses a series of gears and twist cams that allow the actual rocket motors to all pivot in a, in a spiral. And that gives us roll control so that we don't um, spin wildly while we're coming in. Uh, this is intended to keep us going straight down uh, and straight in line with our initial position that we drop in. A lot of the 3D printed components are held together using these melt-in inserts. The whole structure is, uh, is pretty much modular um, with Basing things off of a video game, you don't have too much to go off of uh, initially, where the uh, structure on the inside of the pod is not really informed, but the outside is really, really informed because that's the only thing that the devs have really fully designed. Um, when you get into uh, the exterior, we have a lot of skin panels and aesthetics that go on the outside. So a lot of these melt-in inserts uh, made out of brass allow us to bolt in and screw all the, uh, the parts together and make it really, really sturdy. Most of the structure on my model is made out of ABS, actually. Um, it's, uh, it's really strong and light compared to PLA, and uh, it can be printed much thinner. So a lot of these skin panels are using uh, really, really low infill. Like, I can actually push my finger uh, to some extent into some of the gaps in the, the infill on them. but because they're purely for aerodynamics and aesthetics, um, they're just kind of, you know, along for the ride. The real structure is kind of what you see on the table here next to me. Um, the mechanism and the blast diverter and everything are all the, the main structure of the actual drop pod. And the 
um, top section with the aerodynamics uh, bolts on after you have all the core mechanics. So the real meat of the drop pod is just this lower section here. Uh, each motor has its own servo to control its angle. It has one servo that controls all three's uh, roll position, and I used a great deal of SLA printing uh, to get the, the gears and the guides figured out for that. Um, using the SLA printer, I could iterate a little faster on coming up with new uh, components for that section. Uh, it has a lot of repeated components that are small and have to be smoothed to prevent any binding or wearing. So in the gears on that section, I, uh, I actually went through a dozen probably uh, SLA printed drive gears that, that hook onto the main servo. Um, at the top two, uh, just like in the actual game, we have a, uh, a kind of decorative lid that will eject when we hit the ground to deploy our, our contents, basically. So when it comes to actually dropping, we'll, we'll get a little bit more into what goes inside there. Just like any complicated piece of defense technology, uh, we have a lot of electronics inside this thing that allow it to be controlled. Um, inside, we're using the same thing that I've used in my other rockets. These boards are gonna drive the actual motor controllers and the pyrotechnic triggering inside the, the drop pod. Again, we have three motors to fire and we have um, the actual drop and release that's gonna be handled by this flight controller system. So in the next video, I'm gonna be going into more of the flight controller system and the um, kind of combined and stack-based unit that I'm working on developing for all my rocket platforms so that I can kind of remove a lot of the variables of the development process and make one thing that fits in everything. Eventually we'll have you know a full up drop test where we take this whole thing up with a drone drop it and then have its engines fire and it stop itself before hitting the ground. I've actually already put it up on Colts 3D for uh, download. Um, that, uh, that website is, is great for servicing all sorts of uh, 3D printable projects and everything. So I, I put it up there just because I, I wanted to have it accessible to anyone who wants to have like a, a really nice looking drop pod model from Helldivers but um, doesn't necessarily want to make it <laughs> controlled or, or powered. So if you want to make your own, you know, go check that out. It's available on there. And uh, stay tuned for the next one where we get into the electronics and how things actually work inside this thing. And thanks for watching and hanging in there with me while I turned this out. <laughs>